right? Oh, sorry. Okay. So as a Pan-African broadcaster, one of the things that I enjoy the most about my job is finding out stories about people that are doing work that is sure to bring about impact and change, specifically in the African continent. Rosa Meshega is the perfect example. She's the CEO and founder of Teaching for Success, and she started out her education in Kitante Primary School in her home country, Uganda, which is in East Africa. She then went on to Gayaza High School, but completed her, the rest of her high school tenure in the United Kingdom at Stranmore Sixth Form College, followed by Metropolitan University of London, where she majored in mathematics and statistics. Her tertiary education was in Toronto, Canada, where she's now based. And at the University of Toronto, she graduated with a degree in education and has been an educator for the past 14 years. Rosa, I am so excited to be speaking to you. Welcome. I hope that you're well. Thank you very much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Now, Rosa, when, whenever one thinks about teachers, we all know, and we've heard the cliche, it can't be overstated, how uh, the profession of a teacher is so important. On one hand, teachers are raising future generations. And on the other hand, we've heard stories which are amazing about how, one, how a student has had a particular teacher and just the impact that they've had on their lives has led them to do great things that have impacted generations. Now, for you, where did the journey and the idea Idea start to become a teacher? When did you first feel that, that palpitation? So I've always had a passion for sharing knowledge. And as an eight-year-old kid, mm -hmm. I always wanted to share that knowledge with adults, uh, with uh, my peers, but I didn't have the opportunity to do so. Mm -hmm. So as a child, when I came home from school, I used to share all that I had learned with the rose bushes in front of the house. Now, I, my first career uh, was not in education. Mm. I, my first career was uh, an administrator in the social services department. I worked for the city of London for four years. Mm -hmm. Now, after working for four years in the city of London, and that was after graduating uh, with my first degree, I moved to Canada and I took care of my kids at home uh, for about eight years until my youngest started um, full-time school. And that's when I thought it was a great opportunity for me to pursue my dream mm -hmm. to become an educator. Yeah. So. I took uh, uh, a course, uh, it was a bachelor's degree in education, and I graduated and have been a teacher for about 14 years and loved it. It's a very, very rewarding job. Now you're launching a business around teaching. Talk to us a bit about that because people don't often think business and teaching, it almost feels like two different sectors, but talk to us about the business that you're launching. So the business I'm launching uh, specifically deals with providing professional development workshops for teachers and also uh, provides a consultancy service uh, for owners of schools and for teachers as well. What I have found is that uh, in Uganda, of which I, you mentioned that I did go to primary school and did part of my high school in Uganda, and as well with my experience with talking to a lot of students uh, on my visits, when I visited Uganda, I've spoken to a lot of students who have told me um, that there's a lot of rote learning that goes on in schools. Mm -hmm. And I, want, I wanted to shift uh, that approach of teaching students to teaching students in a more meaningful way. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? is that I don't want, I don't think it's very beneficial for students to learn by just memorizing facts and then regurgitating them during an exam and calling that learning. Uh, meaningful learning means that students are going to learn and understand what they're learning and communicate in an exam or an assessment, any kind of assessment, they're going to communicate their thinking with high order thinking. 
uh, that is thinking on a level that's higher than memorizing facts or telling someone back set something back to someone exactly as they've told them. So my business really is uh, to change uh, that approach of teaching. And I find that students with meaningful uh, learning, students are more engaged in learning and they're able to apply uh, their learning to different areas in life or different subjects and they're more engaged in their learning. They're not just learning to pass an exam. Mm -hmm. So um, my business will really help uh, train teachers in best practices in order to gain new knowledge and new skills uh, to teach students in a way that they can achieve and be very successful in their learning. I really love um, the way that you're describing the new approach that we need to be taking and the, 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 what, what is happening now in the education system where you really have to be able to engage a lot more with the work that you do. So it's not about remembering and cramming. I remember in school, that's, what, <laughs> that's the way that I would kind of deal with things. But now it's really about being able to engage with the material. So you've spoken quite a bit with regards to the students um, and how it helps them on their end. I know that one of the key factors of teaching for success is around professional development for the teachers. So let's get into this, into this part of the conversation. So with regards to the teachers, um, another thing that I've uh, identified is that very few teachers in Uganda take part in professional development. Mm -hmm. uh, school is as strong, or students and their learning is as strong as their weakest teacher, just as a chain is as strong as its weakest link. So continuous and ongoing learning is very important for teachers. And uh, if teachers participate in professional development uh, frequently, I'd say at least on a monthly basis, they're able to gain new skills, to learn new knowledge and to learn new skills and strategies to help their students become more successful in learning. Um, with professional development, there are many ways that it can take place. You can do it online, uh, you can do it through research, through courses, but in terms of my business, we're going to be providing it uh, through uh, a video platform uh, that the teachers will be able to access uh, through the website and then uh, it will be, they can project it on a, a, a wall or a screen and uh, have discussions around what they've learned and collaborate with each other in order to meet the needs of their students, especially their struggling students. Uh, and when I, with regards to this, are you looking more at teachers who have, um, who have students in primary school, in secondary school, which, uh, which, which age group and which um, type of teachers are you targeting specifically? So we'll be targeting uh, teachers teaching in nursery schools, oh, nice. uh, primary schools, secondary schools, as well as those who are either doing their degrees in education and hoping to get into the school system to teach in primary or secondary or nursery or teacher training colleges. Mm -hmm. So those will be our target teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, I will also uh, be providing uh, consultation services for uh, owners of schools because uh, in order to get your teachers into professional development and to be accepting of learning new skills, especially when they've been teaching the same thing over and over, you find sometimes some teachers are very resistant. Mm. So I'll also be working with owners of schools to figure out ways uh, that we can help teachers uh, find uh, be more accepting of professional development and actually see how it impacts the learning of students and see how they can learn and collaborate with each other and learn from each other and support each other as teachers. So uh, those are the services that we'll be providing. And now with regards to when the business is going to be launched, this is really exciting. When, when are you looking at launching the business and, and how can people engage with the business? So we'll be launching the business on August the 1st. And 
on the website, uh, people who are interested in accessing our services will be able to register on the website. There are going to be forms that they'll have access to that they can fill in and tell us more about themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, I cannot just approach a school and begin to bombard them with all kinds of strategies for their teachers. I need to get to know the school. I need to get to know how it runs. I need to get to know what needs the students have, what school improvement plan and goals that the school has. So once I've worked together with the school to try and find out um, what their strengths and needs are, then we'll be able to uh, tailor our videos in our uh, professional development workshops and our consultancy services to the needs of the of the school and of the students and staff. Now, what I like the most um, about what you're doing, there's so many great angles to teaching for success. I think it's fantastic. I love the fact that you are still so deeply connected to what is going on um, back home in Uganda. Uh, for you, what kind of impact do you want this to have in the Ugandan educational system? And do, can you share any insights um, from teachers that you've spoken to or students about the way that teaching is happening and how you're hoping that teaching for success will be able to impact change and um, be sure to, to impact the generation? I mean, Uganda, I believe, has got one of the youngest uh, group, the youngest medium of uh, median of um, people in the world. So this is quite important. Uh, what I have found in my conversations with people and also listening to programs and speaking to people and speaking to teachers uh, is that uh, learning sometimes is not evolving with what is going on around the world. The learning is not exactly authentic and connected to what is going on in the real uh, world. Uh, for example, uh, when I'm teaching, let's give an example, if I'm doing a lesson on time, right? A lot of the time, if we are doing that in a school in Uganda, and I'm not saying that Ugandan teachers are not strong teachers, they are very strong teachers, but we there's always room for improvement for yeah. all of us as educators, including myself. And even with the amount of time that I've spent in the teaching profession, I still uh, take part in professional development to improve my skills and make them better and better, especially with technology uh, globally and how it's being used in every area of life these days, that's very important. Uh, but what I'm finding, for example, if you're having a lesson in uh, teaching students about time, I normally begin my lesson by asking the students, uh, why is time important? Why is time important? When do we use time? Mm. You know, teaching them that it's important to know about time and to tell the time because you might be going for an appointment, you want to get there on time, you want to know how long a journey is going to take, you know, relating our learning to everyday life. Mm -hmm. I think once we do that and teach authentically, students will be really engaged because they know that there's purpose to what they're teaching. Mm -hmm. And it's very important to teach intentionally and purposefully. So I find that that approach will really help the students to be more engaged and also share their ideas. Another thing that I've found is that it's the teaching uh, in a lot of the schools in Uganda is teacher-centered and not student-centered. That means the teacher stands in front of the class, tells the teachers, teaches the students the concepts and the students do the work, it gets marked, it gets returned, they get a grade and that is it, okay? We want us teaching to be student-centered. We want students to share their ideas from each other, to learn from each other, to do research, to communicate their thinking with each other. And that is going to make for a more uh, fruitful and uh, productive way of learning. And that really helps the students to remember more rather than just taking on what a teacher has said, memorizing it and putting that information on a piece of paper. So uh, helping the students to learn authentically is very, very important in schools today. Now I have uh, two final questions for you. The first question is, 
if um, somebody perhaps is not in Uganda, maybe they're in another part of the world, um, because from what I understand, you really want to start focusing on Uganda first as the main, um, the, the country where you want to see this growing the most. Uh, and if you're sitting in another part of the world or, or anything like that, and you want to be able to support Teaching for Success, do you have anything implemented where they can support? Or what would you say about the kind of support that you need now as you start your business holistically? Uh, right now, what would uh, help us is uh, uh, getting in touch with as many schools as possible in Uganda. So if anyone knows of any schools that would benefit and are not getting the professional development uh, that they need for their teachers in order to have really strong teachers, then uh, I'll just uh, request them to uh, reach out on our website or our uh, business Facebook and give us the contacts of these schools so we can reach out to them and get to know the schools, get to know the teachers, get to know how the schools learn and how teachers teach there and see what we can do to support them. Uh, otherwise, the business is really specifically uh, for um, uh, Ugandan schools. It's something that I'm passionate about. I was a student in Uganda, even though um, I have lived a lot of my life outside of the country. I want to give back because the country did give to me. I am Uganda educated and I want to give back from what I've learned. I don't want to be one of those people who move abroad and stay abroad and give their all to uh, another country. Yes, I'm happy. Um, I love my job here and I'm happy to teach students and I find it very rewarding, but I also want to give back to Uganda because I see that its education system is in great need of a huge overhaul. One thing that I wanted to as well uh, mention is how people are very, very focused on grades. Now I'm all for students doing very well and excelling and being really successful, but as an educator, our focus should be on learning, not so much grades. Uh, in my own teaching practice, um, say when I give students uh, a, a test or a quiz or an assignment, it could be a, a journal writing, a project, you know, or anything in, in anything like that. What I do is I tend not to put marks on the paper. Oh. I find that if I put an A or a B or a C or a D, it has sometimes a not very good impact on a student. A student who is a low performing student who always sees low grades on their paper will become really, really discouraged. Mm -hmm. And a student who's doing really well will just look at their grade and say, oh, I got an A and be happy with that and not bother to put any more effort in their work. Mm -hmm. What I focus on is putting next steps on students' papers. What are you going to do next to make it better? I make comments on every question to tell them if they've done it correctly, I say, great. And I tell them exactly what was great about their work, maybe about their strategy, about their thinking, about their application, about their communication. I just don't just put a check mark or put a letter grade or put a number next to the number to say, oh, you got two out of two or whatever, because that is meaningless, mm -hmm. okay? Descriptive feedback is very important in assessment. That is how your, the students are going to learn better, you know? And if a student uh, is um, has gotten a, a question wrong, I'm going to explain what part of the question they might have gotten right. Maybe they got past part of the question correct, and then I'm going to explain to them how to do better next time by giving them strategies. To me, that makes more sense than a teacher marking a piece of work, 10 out of 10, well done, a, a plus, it doesn't mean anything. It's not going to help a student to learn. So that is uh, the uh, approach, focusing very much on learning, and not grades. Grades are important, but they shouldn't be the focus. And uh, the last thing I wanted to say about that is 
a lot of the times we find that teachers move ahead with students who are performing really well mm. and tend to leave the low performing students behind. As educators, it's our responsibility to find out why the students are not performing and to do all we can, not by giving them tons and tons of more work, not by chastising them and ridiculing them, but we make the effort to figure out what the barriers are in their learning. Are they students who learn more visually? Are they students who learn more audially? Are they students who are integrating technology in their work will help them to learn better? Let us find out, make more of an effort as teachers to find out why these students are failing or not doing well and there's always a reason why. It could be something as simple as a, a student is not having enough food to eat, not enough breakfast. Mm. It could be there's trouble brewing at home in the student's family. They might be coming from a family that has a lot of dysfunction and they're so distracted by what's going on at home. It could be social economic uh, factors that are stopping the student from learning. It could be students have a learning disability. So we have to be able to uh, figure out, uh, identify what those barriers are and support the students, differentiate our learning. We cannot do a cookie cutter learning, one size fits all teaching. Okay, we need to assess our kids, get to know your kids as a teacher, and then figure out what helps them to learn. How do they learn? Every kid learns differently and teach the students accordingly. It's an art, it's a skill, but it's doable. Now, I want to take you back to when you were a little, um, a little girl, an eight year old, um, and you were teaching um, rose bushes basically, and you're imparting information. Just to say, by the way, you really have articulated everything so well. And even me, who's not somebody who's in the, who's not an educator, I really have learned so much. And I, I think about approaches and I think about, wow, if I had learned in that way in school, how would I have performed in a different way in yeah. subjects that were more challenging, like mathematics mm -hmm. <laughs> and sciences, yeah. if there was a different kind of approach, you know? So I think that, that the approach that, um, that you that you are using and the way that you're talking about educators and about teaching about both parties being engaged and about really learning and learning skills in school that are going to help you when you get out of school because the world has changed a lot I think it's fantastic and I'm so sure so many people are going to really sign on to teaching for success um, but I want to take you back to when you were an eight-year-old and you were standing in front of the uh, rose bush and you were busy imparting information and teaching the rose bushes for that eight-year-old little girl today, what legacy do you want um, teaching for success to leave? The legacy I want to leave uh, from teaching uh, for success is really leaving no child behind, leaving no child behind. I think that every child has the potential to be successful and to do well in school in different areas. Uh, when I was in school um, having a growth mindset was not a big deal. A lot of teachers had fixed mindsets. You are either a smart child or you are not a very smart child. You're a strong student or you're a weak student, okay? So the legacy I want us to leave is that we need to have in education a growth mindset. That means that students can learn if we can identify their area of need, they can learn if they work hard and improve and we support them uh, effectively and efficiently uh, in their learning. That way, uh, students will not be left behind uh, in their education and we won't just move on with the students that are doing well. I also want to uh, emphasize uh, the importance of, of questioning. Mm. Uh, as a student, when I was in high school, I was very terrible at math. I would have been one of those students who would have been left behind in high school. You know, I wasn't failing math, but I was performing really, really badly. Mm. But when I moved to the UK, their approach of teaching was very different. Students were encouraged to ask questions. With a growth mindset, we realize that 
you learn by making mistakes. It's not a bad thing to make a mistake. That is where when students make a mistake, we're able to correct those mistakes and others are able to learn from those mistakes. So I found that in Uganda, you know, you'd find it very difficult to raise your hand and say, I don't understand, mm -hmm. you know? So I had this math teacher, she was a Polish teacher and she always used to tell me, ask as many times as it takes for you to understand. Okay, I don't care how many questions that you have to ask. So allowing our students to ask questions to say, not just I don't understand, but what exactly is it that they don't understand, right? Give them that freedom to express themselves in those areas. Uh, don't think that a student is either born smart or born uh, not very smart or a weaker student. All students are able to achieve and to thrive. I'm not saying that every student can be an A student, but success is not A. Success is improvement. Every time a child improves in their learning, that is success. We don't have to want to leave the legacy of teachers having fixed mindsets, okay? We want students to know that they can achieve, that they can excel, they can be successful and not fall into the trap of comparison. Uh, I was listening to a program not too long ago uh, that some ladies were discussing, um, they were saying that they, they wanted their kids, they wanted to know what position their kids were in the classroom. Wow. Now, when I moved to the UK, there was no such thing. You know, you got your marks, you focused on what you did well, and you'd say, great, this is what I know, I can make it better. Whatever I don't know how to do well, I'm going to ask the teacher, I'm going to do my research, I'm going to work harder and try and fix it, you know? But I have found, um, I have found that uh, when I was, uh, in the UK and I was learning, you know, I learned that you, you have to have a growth mindset, not a fixed mindset, meaning that you can cut. <laughs> I've lost my train of thought. Okay, I think you can, you'll probably be able to cut it at, at a growth mindset and then you'll edit the rest. So let me ask the next question because you, you had already said it before. Because you, uh, yeah, you ended off saying you have to have a growth mindset, not a fixed mindset. And that's a good place to cut because you said that at the beginning. You said about a growth mindset, not a fixed mindset. Okay. Yeah, okay. Now, uh, so you'll just uh, edit that middle part out. I hope I can edit it well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have much okay. experience in editing. Okay, if you can't, I do have a friend that can do it, but I think it's better than, because the problem with this right. kind of interview yeah. is hard to pick up. So, yeah. Okay, so uh, Rosa, uh, what is the website if people want to find out more about Teaching for Success? So the website is www.teachingforsuccess.ca. Yes. Okay. And so, I mean, I'm really excited. The business is, so we have to do that again. Let me just pick it up again. I really like the way that you articulated um, just the different techniques of teaching and, and the kind of legacy that you want to be able to leave for teaching for success. I think it's really fantastic. Now, we forgot to mention the website at the, at the top end of the interview. Can you please share the website with people if they want to find out more about teaching for success? So the website is www.teachingforsuccess.ca. Uh, it will have all the information about our consultancy services, our professional development workshops, okay. and as well, you'll have access to our business uh, Facebook through that site and my contact as well. Thank you so much. It's been so fantastic talking to you and teaching for success. I know is going to change um, Uganda and the education system and really impact people's lives. So congratulations on that. It takes a lot of courage 
uh, to start this kind of business. And it also takes so much more courage to follow a passion and to do something that is more than yourself. And you uh, are somebody who's definitely doing that and impacting lives. So congratulations. It's been fantastic talking to you, Rosa Mushega, the CEO and founder of Teaching for Success. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to speak more about my business. Thank you. Thank you.